Hello everybody, my name is Roger and the purpose of this video is to go over some points on troubleshooted communications with the CPAM relays. Uh, we'll mostly be concentrating on the ACE850TP which is this module right here. That's most commonly used uh, but I'll also be covering the RS485 connections to the other types of modules. Not going to be a whole lot of talking head on here. I'll be uh, presenting this more or less as a PowerPoint as we go from slide to slide and I'll point out a lot of the different problems I've found through the years with the communications and I hope you get something out of this. And of course as I've mentioned before in my other videos I'm not sponsored by or affiliated with Schneider Electric. I bring these as uh, just a little bit of what I've found in my experience over the years and try to assist you in setting some things up. Uh, there again, as I always say, your mileage may vary. Okay, that's probably enough talking head jibber-jabber, so let's get on with the troubleshooting. Okay, what I intend to cover here are a lot of the things that we encounter over the years of uh, communications with the CPAM relays and the communication modules. One of the first things you want to check is make sure you have power. Use a voltmeter to confirm it. Don't just like think you do or it kind of looks like it. Uh, here's the ACE 949 and the 959. Notice that on the 959 you need power there as a separate entity only if that's the only module on the daisy chain or if it's the first module. Otherwise it passes through on the daisy chain as you can see from the connections there. There again on the ACE 969 you have the same type of thing and it shows the power terminals for the daisy chain module, modules or the single module power terminals. Make sure you're connected to the right one. On the ACE 850 TP it'll be on the bottom left corner. Uh, there again it can look like your power is there even though the voltmeter may show it. Make sure it's plugged in all the way. I've found that problem before. Okay, is it the end of the line? Make sure if it is that the uh, RC and RCX, there's a little jumper there, make sure it's in the proper position. This does not apply to Ethernet, only to daisy chained RS485. Yeah, and your protocol when you're using a gateway, whether it be the EGX 100, 300, uh, maybe you're taking it to a, a Lynx, maybe you're taking it to an ion meter, uh, COM port, it has to be set as JBus. Even though it's a Modbus device, it must be set to JBus to have the proper offset. And your Modbus, or JBus as we call it wiring, on your two wire, make sure your polarity is correct. Same with your four wire. I've seen where um, you know they get the polarity backwards. Generally it happens at the gateway end, but it pays to make sure and check it all the way through. Okay, in your R in your SFT2841 software you can configure your com your COM module by clicking on the little box there uh, to the right of your for example here we're using COM1. Once this opens up, make sure you choose the correct module type. Uh, the protocol, of course, there will be Modbus. And the CPAM address, you cannot have more than one with one address. You can't have two ones or two twos, etc. Each one has to be unique. The speed and the baud rate needs to be the same for everything on that string. Same with the parity. You can't have odds and evens and nuns all on the same string. They all have to be the same. With the ACE850 TP module for Ethernet, you click on the box to the right after you've chosen the Ethernet there. Make sure that box is checked or you won't be able to open that configuration block. Once this opens, um, enter your IP address and the subnet mask. Whether or not you need a gateway will depend on your IT department. Uh, if, you're up, you're, if your facility is operating on separate VLANs, you'll most likely have to have a gateway in there. Check with your IT though. Okay, here where you're plugging your cables in, make sure you're plugged into the right one. This is on the base unit. Uh, port F is where you plug in for your ACE850. 
C2 or C1 can be used for the 959 and 969 modules. The D1 and D2 are used, for example, the SyncCheck MCS025 module or an MSA uh, analog input or output module. Even though all the jacks look the same, they don't work the same. Okay, on your ACE850 TP module, uh, the blue one there is the one that goes to CPAM, be marked F. And you can connect your e incoming Ethernet to either P1 or P2. It's also possible to daisy chain from one to the other, where you bring in uh, to P1, you get on P2, and you go to the next uh, compartment and come into P1 and go out on P2, etc. But we don't recommend doing that. Here again, it can be used as a daisy chain, but each CPAM still must have a unique IP address. It's not recommended, again, but it can be done. Some IT departments will see this as an unsupervised switch and disable the port, thus shutting off your communications. Run into this many times. If that be the case, sometimes you will have to disable RSTP function. To do that, from the setup screen, click on Advanced Parameters. When this comes up, uh, click on the RSTP tab where it's enabled by default. Uncheck that, then click OK. That'll disable RSTP and it won't appear as an unmanaged switch to your IT people. Uh, don't use a standard CAT5 or CAT6 patch cable for the ACE850TP connection to the base unit. Use only the cable supplied with a module. Replacements are available from Schneider. If you need something longer, they can be special ordered. For your RS-485 networks, use proper cabling and termination practices. I've seen some really wild stuff with things just twisted together and little wire nets put in and grounds left off. Uh, make sure your terminations are neat on the end and a short will take the entire network down. If you end up with an open somewhere, at the minimum it'll take whatever's downstream from that and occasionally it'll take the entire network down because it can no longer see the end of line termination. Some suggestions here. This, this can be frustrating. Take your time. Go step by step. Confirm each operation as you go. Uh, most of the time with Ethernet, if you can ping the IP address but it won't communicate, consult with your IT department. The port on their end may not be configured properly or could be on the wrong VLAN. A lot of times just simply rebooting the ACE module will clear the issue. If a uh, network switch has been replaced or IT has been monkeying around with port settings, this might be necessary. I've had to do this quite a few times over the years. Of course, sometimes the actual problem can be found at the Ethernet switch. In that case, good luck sorting it out. What you're seeing here in this little short clip is a lineup of some CPAM relays that are connected via RS-485, JBUS, hence Modbus, to COM1 of an ION7650 meter. Uh, this is not one of the more common ones I do or have dealt with, but it, I'm just showing this as one possibility of how you could connect something. The disadvantage is if there is a short in that RS-485 network or if there's an open, we generally lose the whole string. This is why Ethernet to each individual relay is a preferred method. Yes, that last slide you saw was an Ethernet switch I actually had to try to find connections in for 14 different CPAM relays, and it did take a while. Um, nothing was really mounted. The things were just stacked on top of each other. The patch cords were all random lengths. It was quite the nightmare sorting that out. But, uh, at the time, I figured I just had to take a picture of it, and I kept it. Uh, one thing I wanted to go over again here was on the base of your ACE850TP module, which I'm showing right here. Uh, don't get your connection points messed up. This one over here goes to the base unit. These over here for the Ethernet. I've found where I've had a call to go do some troubleshooting where these have been reversed or one was not plugged in where it was supposed to be. Right here is your power connection. A lot of times just unplugging this, waiting a minute and plugging it back in will uh, solve the problem when you're not communicating. If you can ping it but you can't connect with it with your uh, other types of software remotely. A lot of times that's all it is, is somebody is in the network department or IT has changed something, all you've got to do is reboot it. Another thing I need to reiterate is the cable between the ACE850 unit and the base unit. Make sure you use this one. It's the one that comes with the module. 
If it's three meters long, if it ends up being too short, you need to contact Schneider and get a longer cable. Don't just stick in a Cat 5 or Cat 6 patch cable. It will not work. Don't know the exact reasons why. Uh, I've never really tracked down to see what the pinouts out on are on these, but uh, I've also seen where someone has tried to use a patch cable and actually melted it. So I don't know what the deal is there, but uh, don't substitute it. I okay, hope you got something out of this and help you through guiding that troubleshooting. I know it can be a stinker sometimes. Thanks for watching. Oh, and please like and subscribe. Hit that bell if you want to be notified of more video posts. Thanks.